Hi, my name is Mary Danielson. I'm a personal historian who helps families preserve the stories and family mementos they'd like to pass on to future generations. I'm also a FlipPal user. We realize that many of the websites that give you guidelines for preparing for disasters are also lacking in the specifics of scanning those photos and documents that need to be preserved. Our goal in this webinar is to give you some practical advice on how to begin scanning your family history in a way that is not overwhelming or expensive. Let's begin. Instead of risking the loss of your family memories, what if you protected them by scanning and storing them in several places before disaster happens? That's what we'd like you to consider with this webinar. The professionals in museums and libraries utilize the 3-2-1 method. They make three copies of everything on two different forms of media and stored in two different locations, with one of them off-site. Consider doing the same for your household as part of your personal emergency preparedness plan. Protecting your home and assets doesn't have to be lots of work. Here's some suggestions we've compiled for how to back up the files in your personal emergency plan like a pro. As you work through the plan, you will naturally develop a to-do list for yourself. Keep a notebook and pen handy or create an online checklist and schedule time for each task. You'll generate ideas of what will work for you. Give yourself short deadlines. This way you'll complete the task by compiling a large number of small tasks. Keep a box or shredder handy. There's a natural sifting process that happens when you begin organizing your important papers and realize that you don't need to hang on to everything. Some can be tossed. Never just throw those papers in the trash, however. Protect your identity as you work by ripping them up in small pieces or shredding them. As you create your household inventory, think about whether you have receipts for items you've photographed. Compile those receipts in order and scan them. Here's a tip. Write the name of the room the item is in on your Flip House sketch kit and scan it. Save these receipts to a folder labeled Household Possessions. If you have formal appraisals, scan them and put them in a separate folder labeled appraisals. This will give you the opportunity to review them and determine if it's time for an updated appraisal. Remember that older printer ink fades over time. If as it's happening to your documents, this will give you a clue that it's outdated. Add that to the list of projects you'd like to accomplish. Any other identifying information you may have to back up your file should also be included in the scanning process. Perhaps there's a letter from your grandfather that accompanies an old pocket watch or a photo of a treasured piece of artwork hanging on the wall. Applaud yourself. Getting these tasks started one step at a time is already an accomplishment. Before you know it, you'll be finished in teaching your friends and family to do the same. In addition to your household inventory, you must consider what important papers are in your personal emergency plan. We like to call this your grab-and-go file. Most governmental lists for emergency supply kits mention your need to compile your important papers, but they aren't specific enough for which documents you'll need. For more information about the important documents you should already have in ready to go in case of an emergency, visit our FlipPal website. You won't need originals of everything. Some, such as password lists, monthly bills, medication schedules, banking records, tax returns, investments, and emergency phone numbers can be compiled as digital files. It'll save you time and space as you're racing to leave in an emergency. Now it's time to consider how to back up your files. There isn't one perfect method that will work for everyone. Pick a system that works best for you. Do what you can afford. The 321 method calls for you to make three copies of everything. Back it up to two forms of media and store one copy off site. Sounds simple. Now, how do you make it work? Say, for example, you're finished with all your scans in your FlipPal memory card, and you now have 9,000 family photos and six gigabytes of files scanned, including scans of the genealogy scrapbook your great Aunt Tracy created in 1977. 
subfolders are labeled household inventory, appraisals, receipts, family photos, business papers, legal documents, important contacts, and miscellaneous. You could back all of these to, uh, up to an external hard drive. That's one copy. You could back up to flash drives. They're portable and readable almost everywhere. You could put them in your pocket and leave the house. They are not considered long-term storage solutions, however. You'll have to test them regularly to ensure they're still working properly. Taking care of them by keeping them away from extreme temperatures, dust, and moisture will lengthen their reliability. The flash drive you use for everyday backups should not be the flash drive you use for backing up important documents. Plan to transfer your files to newer ones every four to five years. DVDs still have a tremendous reliability if you take care of them properly in your storage methods. Don't just throw these backups in a drawer. Put them in a hard case and store them in a specific location. Keep them away from extreme temperature changes. Store them away from heat sources in a place that's close to 70 degrees or below. The six gigabytes of files you've scanned will require you to burn two DVDs. The 9,000 photos will require several more depending on the type of DVD you choose. For longevity purposes, gold DVDs are preferred for their durability. They cost a little more, but they're worth it. Some people use their camera memory cards as a backup, never completely emptying the card of images. It's expensive, but it's done. The Picture Keeper 8GB thumb drive is especially easy to use. Just plug it into your computer's USB port and it finds and copies all of the scanned images onto the drive. The included software keeps track of previously copied images, so the next time you plug it into your computer, it detects any new pictures you've scanned and copies them to the thumb drive. Keep in mind that technology changes so rapidly that any form of media you choose could become outdated in 10 years or more. When you update your emergency plan later on, you can also update the media type before access to it becomes more difficult. Now, where to store your backups? A great place is a safety deposit box at the bank. If using a picture keeper, get your picture keeper from the safety deposit box at the beginning of each month. Plug it into your computer and back up any new scanned items, then return it or stash it in a fireproof box, perhaps even in a waterproof container if you live near a flood zone or water hazard. If you use DVDs, this might be a good place to store them. Keep one copy with you, perhaps your external backup drive. Find a trusted friend or family member to swap backups. Someone who doesn't live in the same area as you or would face the same emergency as you. Definitely. Don't have someone hold your information who is living in the same house or building as you. You're likely to both face the same emergency. Remember, two different locations, one of them off-site. Consider a cloud-based storage solution for backing up your entire computer and all your files. There are many companies such as Dropbox, Semantic, or Carbonite that provide various packages for backing up your computer files in a protected environment. Online cloud-based services appear to be the safest way to store important files and documents off-site. While they cost money, it's a pittance compared to replacing all those documents. The disadvantage is, if in an emergency the internet is down in your area, you will have to wait to retrieve your files. In the event you face an emergency where one type of file, say your external hard drive, is ruined, you'll have a backup to use. If you rely only on electronic files, but the power is out following an emergency, you'll have many of the hard copy files with you. This 321 method will help ensure your peace of mind in an otherwise chaotic emergency. We hope you found this information useful. Now let's answer two questions. How do I find all the JPEGs on my computer if I store them in different subfolders? If you're not using the Photo Keeper, but you are using an Apple computer, click on the Finder button in the lower left of your toolbar. 
In the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you will find a search bar. Type in .jpg in the bar and hit a return key. If you are using a PC, click on the Windows Explorer button. That's the window image with your files on it. Click on the computer with all the drives. At the top right-hand corner, there's another search bar. Again, type in .jpg and hit the Enter button. In both cases, it will take a while for your computer to generate a complete list. From there, you can easily copy your images onto backup drives. Another question. How much speed do I need to use cloud-based storage code solutions? When you connect to the internet in your office or your home, you connect through a cable modem or through a digital subscriber line connection. DSL is a very high-speed connection that uses the same wires as a regular telephone line. Older dial-up telephone modems are no longer fast enough to access the volume of information you're storing online. We hope this is